In this tutorial I'll be making this clock face. Now you can download uh, templates from the internet, clock faces, so why would you want to go and, and make another one in GIMP? Well it's a good exercise on how to use different functions within GIMP and you can make your own personal clock face. So I'll close this one off, close uh, and open a new file, go to new, I go down to A4 because that's about the size of the cheap cl uh, clocks you can purchase and change the faces on them. Now I, I don't want the height, I want it the same size as the width so I change that to 209.97 and that'll give me a, a good square of type of uh, A4 paper. Now I need to add some guides so I'll go to image and go to guides and go to buy percentages click on the percentages and it's loaded down the bottom I bring it up the top we're going to put a horizontal line so we click OK I'll go back to image because I need a vertical line now I go to guides go by percentages and the down arrow gives me the vertical click on the vertical by 50% and click OK now I go to my ellipse tool I make sure it expands from the center and it's a fixed ratio. I go to the center of my crosshairs and expand to the edge, or well not completely at, to the edge but close to it. Now it makes a selection. I go to edit and I stroke that selection with three pixels and stroke it, it'll be the foreground colour which is black and stroke and I'll go to select and select none now I make a new layer ok transparency I go to my paintbrush tool and choose a brush that's fairly small so I'll just increase this a little so we can see our brush that's about it I'm using the square bracket keys to get that. I go to the top, click once, let the mouse button go, hold the shift key down and just move the mouse and it'll pull itself into that vertical line. Click OK. Go to the other side, click once with the mouse, let the mouse button go, hold the shift key down and drag a line across to the other side of the circle and click once. Now we go and duplicate that layer. Now I need to rotate that, I go to my rotation tool, click in the area and it gives me the rotation. Now I need to rotate it by 30 degrees, I got that by, fi figure by dividing 360 which is the circumference of our circle by 12 which gave me 30. So I click rotate and wait for GIMP to put it in as it goes across, let's quickly put it on the screen and the rotation. Now I go and duplicate that layer we just done the rotation on. Go back to my rotation tool, click in the area and once again rotate it by 30 degrees and rotate. Now I return to my background layer which is the white one click on that one which makes it active go back to my paintbrush tool and enlarge the brush slightly by using the bracket keys now I'm going to put in the points that each of the hour hands will point to when, you, when they get there because these guides will be removed they're only just uh, layers so they're not permanently on our background layer which is the clock face these points I'm putting in now will be permanent on the clock face Okay, now I'll return to the top layer of my rotation. Now I go and select my numbers we're going to place in. This is where you can make it nice and personal. You can change the colour and you can change the style of fonts you want. This one here I'll choose one I've downloaded from the internet. It's not a standard one but uh, it's, it's one that I felt was suitable for this. So it's woodcut, woodchuck, click on it, move into the area where you're going to uh, place it, 
and then type in number 10. Now number 10 is the, the one that protrudes the most out of, your, uh, out of your numbers. Now we need to increase that size so we can actually see the numbers. And that's about a reasonable size. Now I go to my move tool, click on it, and click in the number 10 area, uh, move the active layer, click in the number, and you notice a little tiny crosshairs within the number 10. That gives me a guide to be able to place them on, on the line and release the mouse button. Go back to my text tool, and once again I type in number 11, close, go to the move tool, and move that into position as well. Now you notice the little crosshairs there, that gives you so you can put it exactly on the line. So, I missed the little dot there, I'll put it in later on. Now I go back to the uh, text tool, and once again I do number 12, and we carry on. Now with number 12, you go to the move tool, with number 12 you'll feel, you'll feel it jump into position because the uh, the guidelines pulls it in and you just move it up to where you want and just let it go. So you, you go around your clock doing the same thing. Now we do number one and continue on. So I'll do a move, I'll do a quick pause and we'll go through and place all the numbers in their cor correct positions. We come back to our last number which is nine which is completes the, the movement of all the numbers in the right positions. And there we have it. Now our guidelines, we don't really need those, so in this case I, I turn them off so we can't see them. Now there's all my numbers in position. I go to the bottom layer, right click on it, and merge visible layers. And that brings all the, the visible layers into place. And that leaves the guideline layers invisible so they're not, they can't be merged. I don't really need them now, I'm quite happy with the layout so I just drag them into the waste bin, click on them and just click the waste bin and they're gone. Our guidelines are still there because they're a, another, just a layer over the top like a transparency. Now we go to file and open as a layer. I choose this image because if it's, uh, it's easy to place into place but not only that if you put a person's image in there, like a child's face, the clock hands would be in the centre, which is not very, uh, doesn't look very nice. Now we have it there. We turn the opacity down so we can see our numbers underneath. Okay, there's our numbers. Now I'll go back to my ellipse tool. Now I turn off the fixed aspect ratio. That's because I want to make an oval with around this image. So I'll go to the center and just drag out an oval around that image on the screen. This is where you make it nice and personal. The same as the numbering, you could, could have made them uh, a different color. And once we've got our selection, I normally don't use this, but I go to select because my printout select, uh, tutorial is, uh, I use this format. I go to select and toggle the quick mask. That puts it in there, around that selection. I go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. Now you can't see the rest of the image because we're dealing with a... Um, a quick mask. So I, I dragged it down by using that little uh, compass area and moved into the area so I can see the, the fuzziness. So in this case, the change linked, I need to increase that to quite a bit. I move it up to 200 and about 210 will do me. The instructions say 207, that'll do, and click OK. And GIMP goes through and puts the blur in that quick mask for me. Now I go back to select and switch off that quick mask. Return to select and invert that selection. 
right click your uh, image make sure you have an alpha channel which I don't have and click on the alpha channel add an alpha channel now just hit the delete key on the keyboard and that removes the outer rim of our fuzziness go to select and turn the selection off now I right click the top layer and merge that down it still has that fuzziness look and you could have moved the your opacity up to 100% back to 100% if you wanted the other way so we go back to our paintbrush tool and put a dot right in the middle for our shaft to come through and then that's our job completed you can uh, put anything else you like in there if you place in a person's face like a child a baby's face it's best to put it on either the right side or the left side away from the center of the uh, of the clock otherwise you've got the hands pointing out over their face but on the side it'd be quite acceptable but that image there is the is the one i chose so thank you for watching if you go to my uh, channel and click on the channel button you will find a link in the top right hand corner of my channel where you can find a hard copy in this in a pdf format because there's quite a few little tricky steps to go through thank you for watching